Hello consumers of video based internet content, Sanction here and today we're going to talk about my track Some Kind of Magic which is featured on the compilation that you see before your very eyes. Um, all the links and stuff are in the description if you want to go and buy a copy if you've not checked it out already. Um, loads of great tracks by loads of great people um, including this track. So let's jump into the project and if you're not familiar with the track let's just play a little bit. Here we go. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's just jump into the project and figure out how this track was made. I mean, we don't need to figure it out. I can tell you, I made it, right? So let's start with these things as we always do with the drum track. So I'm gonna solo the drum track and we're gonna have a listen. Or at least the main part of the drum track. Talk about the build up later. Okay, so the main part of that break or the main rhythm is coming from this sample, which I've called I've called hip hop. I can't really remember where it's from. It's obviously from an old funk record, right? Um, but that's doing the body of the the loop and the, the groove. And all I've done on there is I've just rolled off the really low bottoms, and it's more like it's a bit flappy on the bottom end if you turn it off. You probably can't really tell um, unless you've got headphones on. Just tightens up that bottom end, it's a bit snappier on the kick drum. Um, but yeah, I can't remember where that, that comes from. And looking at this, I've obviously changed the the swing on it or the groove on it from the original loop. Um, it looks like, uh, if we set that to sixteenths. Yeah, it looks like I've just quantized it to a really harsh, normal sixteenth grid. Um, so there's, take all the swing out of the, out of the funk, take all the funk out of the funk loop. Um, and then I've obviously bounced it down. I don't know why I've bounced down that first bar. I must have done some editing later on in the track. But yeah, that's like the actual groove of the, the drums. On top of that, I've got this aim and break, which is like a really simple, just standard, you know, one bar aim and two snares, little shuffle in the middle. And if you look, I'm actually using my own uh, sample pack there. <laughs> so yeah, so the, you know, I use my own samples, so that's how good they are. Go and buy them, they're brilliant. But also, to help this along, I've also got 
the some shuffles from another Eamon looking at this. And it's just the hats out of a different Eamon. I wonder if you can tell by zooming in where it's from. No, I must have bounced it down and called it Eamon hats at some point. Um, and I assume that's just doing hard sixteenths as well. Yeah. Interestingly, I obviously had some other. I obviously had. Obviously, had an open hat at some point, which I didn't end up using. Um, but all that does, it just just add some extra hi hats to this. I obviously, felt that the hi hats weren't cutting through on that aim and enough. Um, and then just to beef that up, as usual, we've got a kick and a snare layer. Interestingly, though, that kick is sampled from a different Eamon. Um, and I've also got a separate Eamon snare layer. Which sounds like it's got a bit of reverb on. Yep. Touch. Um, quite short. And just the mid range and, and tops. Um, and they've just got a ringier tone to the one on the Eamon that I was using. And like, if you listen to the Eamon without them, and then with. Here we go, this is with. You just get more of that aimonness about the loop. Um, so when all that stuff is together, uh, just the drums, please. It's just a nice chunky rhythm section, really. It's like, you know, there's no mad chopping, no mad EQs. Like if we look at the, the channels on that, the Eamon, again, just rolling off. Quite a lot of the low because we've got, you know, we're gonna leave room for our kick and snare, but well enough, you know, 120 ish. Um, obviously, we looked at the hip hop, that's just the bottom, those aim and extra aim and hats. It's like quite a gentle slope, almost halfway up the, the frequency range. Um, don't know why I'm using an actual EQ rather than the low cut on Cubase, but must be a reason. Or maybe I just hit the wrong button. Uh, these snares with the reverb on, yeah, so I'm just obviously wanting to bring out those frequencies. So we listen to what that EQ has actually done. And we'll bypass it for a second. Uh, I believe it's that button. No, how do you bypass EQs these days? There it is. So this is without. And then with. So it brings out that sort of shininess and it brings out a bit of, a bit of a lumpiness around the 100 Hertz, which felt like it was missing maybe. Um, the more sort of drum and bass breaks he snare, it's just a nice short, tight snare that I've used. It's probably one that I've built for another track and just dragged it into it because it sounded cool. And the extra aim and kick, that's just as is. Um, this transmitter, I'll talk about that later. Uh, that's basically helping the kick fit with the sub later on. Um, and then at the end of every eight bars, we've got this little drum roll. Sounds like this. Built from two fill samples. Uh, we look at those. That is a vengeance one. Uh, they're both vengeance fills. It looks like I've edited this one at some point though. Uh, I basically built one fill out of two. I've got some quite harsh EQs on it. Oh no, no EQ on that at all. Sound like there's a lot of bottom cut off, but there was obviously a lot of bottom cut off in the original sample. Same with that one, actually. They're just thrown in as is. Uh, and we hear those together. Um, on the build-up, we've got a different kick. I mean, it's like a 909, like, um, not quite distorted. But if you imagine in the old days you would put your kick through analog mixer, you could turn the gain knob up, but the channel um, slider down so you would get like an overdriven sound which wasn't quite distorted um, I actually sampled this from an old track called Disco Biscuit but it, it literally that's it, it's a 909 kick with a little bit of overdrive on you get the same kind of um, same kind of sound if you, you throw your 909 through something like Sausage Fattener but don't use any of the distortion or tone controls just use the gain knob um, you get a kind of similar kind of Almost like that sort of Italian, sort of Belgian, early 90s kind of sound. Um, so we're using that 
as the kick drum in the build-up rather than the big aim and kick. And I've also got this thing that I've called EDM clap. Which I think might be an 808 clap at some point. Um, we've got some reverb on it cut the bottom off, but I'm also doing this sound shifter. which I've talked about this in other videos before, but if you look, we're automating it up. So as the roll speeds up, so does the pitch of the clap. I like using the sound shifter. It's got a horrible smeary kind of um, texture to it when you use it. And then we've also got a filtered version of that hip hop loop, which is coming in on a higher pass. And I'm just using the Vengeance Filter XL. Um, it's my go-to filter. It sounds really nice. The resonance is really nice on it. Um, you can really abuse the resonance to get some really cool um, effects out of it. And that's kind of it for the drum sounds, um, the actual tracks themselves. Obviously, Clap's got the bottom rolled off. This kick, I don't think we're doing anything with. Yep, it's just flat, as is from the record. Um, I did actually clean it up using some audio restorations tool, uh, rest restoration tools, because um, there's quite a lot of record crackle on my version of Disco Biscuit. So I cleaned up that, and there's, the bottom end was a bit flappy as well. So I tightened that up. But it's a nice, a nice 909, basically. Like I said, with a bit of overdrive on it. Um, and then all that stuff is going through the drum bus. So we go back to our main loop. Solo the group. Everything's in there. Apart from... I don't know what is in there. I must have saw, uh, muted it at some point. There we go. Right. So everything runs through a bus. And no EQs or anything on that, um, but I'm, I'm using this um, Waves plugin, um, Puig Child 670. It's a VST representation of a, I don't remember off the top of my head, um, but there's an actual unit called a something something 670. Um, and it's got a really specific sound. It's really good at gluing drums together. And if you look, what's actually happening here? Very, very little. So. This time constraint is basically a um, a linked attack and release. So one is really fast on both, two is kind of a bit fast on both, three is kind of medium on both. You see what I mean? It's like it, as you slow down your attack, you also slow down your release. So when it's at six, I believe that's just open all the time. Um, and just a tiny little bit of threshold, and I'm just bumping up the input a little bit. I just really want it tickling between zero and like minus one dB of like gain reduction or whatever. And it just kind of glues them together. We turn it off. And then on. It's just got that sort of magic glue that everyone talks about with, with compressors. I, I find I get the best results using this. Um, all this means is that the right channel is linked with the left channel. Um, and actually, I've left this button on. Um, we would probably want to turn that off, but if we look at the channel, when it's, oh, it's not actually pulling through. Ah, oh, there it is. Um, and it's simulating a mains hum. If we turn that off, that will eventually disappear, I think. And if we look, it never actually. There we go. There's always this like little bit. Um, so quite why I left that on, I don't really know. Um, it's on by default. I probably just didn't. Too lazy. Too lazy to turn it off. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it with the drums. Very little else going on there. Quite a simple drum track compared to most. Later on in the track, the rhythm switches up, and we'll get to that here. That's a really simple trick. Um, I've obviously added a 909 ride there, which is coming from yeah, Roland Cloud 909. Sounds as authentic as you're ever going to get. And this rhythm here, it's just the aim and again, just played. But I'm also adding this double track. So it's like bouncing off the other ones, you get boom, boom, ch -ch -ch -ch. without, with. It's just a little bit quieter in the mix. It's like 
you imagine back in the day you would have that on your sampler and you might re-trigger it so you'd be playing it and then you'd have another channel playing from your sampler again and you just re-trigger it manually to do something it's kind of that vibe um but i tidied it up a little bit like no normally you would just like say if we were going to actually do it like we would do in the olden days you would basically just like re-trigger that somewhere around there and you you'll recognize that sort of vibe from loads of old hardcore and old jungle tracks So that's all I was doing. I'm just kind of paying homage to that kind of um, vibe, and that is, as they say, it for the drums. Like I say, it's a very simple drum track compared to um, a lot of my tracks. Just a nice groove. So, drums done. Let's start having a look at the bass. And again, very very simple again. So this is the main bass drop. Um, those you've been following my other uh, breakdown videos. We'll know that sometimes my bass lines are very complicated and all over the shop. This is two channels, nice and simple. Just sounds nice. And all that is, is, is the usual sub bass that I use, which is actually from Trillion and it's a Juno 106 sub. If you've got Trillion, I'll show you the preset. It's just called Clicky 106 Sub. I believe it's in the Bass Electric. No, sorry, Bass Synth Mono. No, Synth Bass, maybe? I can't remember. Uh, let's have a look for J, J for Juno. There you go. So that must be on the Synth Mono then. Was it the one I said it was called Clicky 106 Sub? There it is. No, oh, it's highlighted. <laughs> um, yeah, Synth Bass. And there it is, click on And I probably just tweaked. I think this might, it may have a bit of chorus and all sorts of stuff on the original patch. I'd probably tweak some of that, sort out the attack. I think some resonance. You can play with the cutoff to make it sound. You know, that's more like a, a Juno that you might know. But so I've got it. So it's kind of just doing the subs with some harmonics. Um, and on that, I've got a little bit of our bass. At 40 hertz, but really low down on the intensity. And it just adds a little bit of whoomph in the bottom end. And then I talked about on the kick drum track, if you remember, there was the VPS transmitter. Oops. And all that's doing is telling the side chain on the sub here to trigger. So basically every time um, a sound triggers from anything on uh, whether it's got a transmitter attached to it, it will do this quite gentle, slow side chain. And all that does is gives, and, and we're only, only the very sort of low bottom end there. So up to what's that, about 30 hertz, 40 hertz. So from 40 hertz downwards, every time the kick plays, the sub ducks out. So it just gives the kick room to sort of sit on top of the sub without getting too distorted or, um, you know, flappy. When they flap together, you, you'll know what I mean when you hear a kick and a sub together and sometimes it's like... <laughs> That kind of sound. But I'm also doing a little boost at about 50. Um, key is this track in? Yeah, we're in G, so 50 hertz is like roughly where a G hits. If we play a G uh, at the right octave, we hit like the main lump of it is around 50 hertz. And I'm just doing a little ODB boost at that, but quite quite wide. But if you look, if you look at the two lines there, the bottom line shows where the sound coming in is. Top line is going out, so we've just done got a little bit of boost just at the sort of main bit of that bass sound. Um, and like I say, it's around 50 because that's where you know the G hits, just feels like the right place to do it. But the main bass sound is this. That's kind of serum, a really simple sound. It's a um, I've got this wavetable, it's actually. I think it may have been, yeah, started life as a, a, a preset from this uh, Future Bass pack. But it's really just a very analog um, sine wave. You see, it's like a sine wave, but quite wobbly. You know, there's a clean sine wave. There's this sine wave, it's a bit wobbly. And, and then all I'm doing is just distorting it. So if we turn that distortion off. 
In fact, if we turn all the effects off, you get to hear just the raw sound. And again, it's kind of like, um, you know, a subby sine wave. Um, but because of that wobbliness on the waveform, it's got quite a lot of harmonics going on. And I'm probably, yeah, I'm cutting off, cutting off all the bottom end because we want our sub to fit. I'm also doing a boost around there because um, when we turn all our effects back on, that was probably the nice sweet spot. Yeah, if we turn that off, it's a little bit dull. It just brings out the fizziness. Yeah, but all these effects are doing is just ways to make it sound bigger and wider. So the dimension expander is just bringing the side up a little bit. I know it's actually on. I've got it set to zero, but you know we could we could make that really wide. I've obviously, kept it quite narrow. Uh, distortion is doing quite a lot of a sort of resonant peak distortion around there. Uh, that's really sort of bringing up the volume and bringing up that fizziness. Flanger. Uh, there again, that's set to zero. I didn't use that in the end. Same with the chorus. Compressor. Just doing a tiny little bit. Again, it's just kind of bringing up those fizzy textures. Um, no reverb and no EQ. Um, so that can be turned off. And then on the channel, I've got a little bit of reverb. Just a kind of tiny amount just to give it a bit of room space and a tiny bit of delay. Um, with the low filter turned on, so it doesn't distort, the, uh, doesn't delay the low. Um, tones, just the higher ones. Not too much feedback, really low in the mix. Again, just gives it a bit of space. And when you play that with the sub, that's nice. Oh, was a little bit of portamento on this bass. And um, there you go, portamento down here, set to mono. So we can play one note at a time. Um, and it's fairly sort of quick, quick enough, but slow enough that you get that horrible slide. Um, and it's set to legato so that if we if we go up without overlapping the notes it doesn't slide, it doesn't glide but as soon as we overlap our notes it does, so nice simple sound I'm just doing a groove that fits nice with the, the drums and then later on in the track um, there's a, a different sub line, which is dead simple it's over that um, aim and chop bit and it's just single notes pitch bending down. And I use the Cubase Parabola. Oop, can't find it there. Cubase para Parabola. Um, to do a, a sort of bendy line like that. Let's have a straight line. So it kind of, the amount of pitch bend increases over time. So it starts slow. And by the time you get to that, it's pitching down quite quick. And on its own, that sounds it's dead simple like this. Obviously, if you're listening on a phone, you won't hear that. But get your headphones on. And that is kind of it. Nice, simple bass line. Later on, on the second drop, I drop in with a slightly different sound. Um, just for the first eight bars. Sounds like this. And again, that's a really simple sound. If you look at it, it is a square wave with quite a high resonant filter on it. So we turn the filter off, you know, typical kind of square wavy thing, turn the filter on, and I'm actually triggering that movement on the cutoff with this envelope here. So if you look over the time of this envelope, we're going from there to like about halfway up, but like I said, the resonance is quite high, without the resonance, it's kind of like a filtered square wave, but get that resonance up. And again, just got some uh, portamento on it, glide. So yeah, for the first eight bars, it drops in with that instead of the um, saw, uh, the uh, sine wave bass. And then it switches back. So yeah, nothing too, you know, complicated there. 
just some some nice sound design um, and a good groove that just fits nice with the drums. So we've done drums, we've done bass. Let's have a look at the vocal. Now, if you um, if you've heard a track, now then I can't remember the name of it, but it's an old Italian piano house track, and they use the same vocal um, in a very similar way. So I kind of ripped that off. Um, you can kind of see the track name down there, where it's from. Um, but it's also, if you know Sweet Sensation, Shades of Rhythm, um, it's the same place they got that vocal from. And the reason we've got all different channels here is because I wanted different amounts of um, effect on different things. I didn't want to automate too much. So the main sort of rhythm vocal uh, does have some delay on it quite low in the mix and then when we get to that bit where she screams a little bit um you know a lot more in the mix for the delay on there but also um if you notice added a little bit of reverb there as well um just gives a bit of a sort of nice spaciness and then these two channels here where i start doing the weird pitchy stuff so they're the same amount of reverb and delay as the the whales and stuff oh i said there's no reverb on that second channel but that's where i start doing the more pitchy kind of um, like here. And that's just a really simple effect. There's one channel here. And that's just up here, pitched up. Um, pitched up seven semitones. And this one's pitched down 12. So you get a low octave and a, um, you know, seven notes up. It's almost like a chord or a heart, a fake harmony almost and I pepper that throughout the, the track there's like quite a few little bits of pitchy stuff you know that's like pitched at three that's a full octave up Again, nice and simple. I'm not really doing a lot of processing on the vocals because it's a cappella um, that's been, you know, very well produced on very expensive equipment. I mean, it already had a little bit of reverb and delay on it. So the the delay that I put on is really just a mask where I've chopped it up. Um, but yeah, simple, you know. Like all I'm really doing is just cutting off the bottom end so it fits in the track nice. Um, you know, nothing complicated at all. And that's that. Oh, so that was the chop that I did. Then I bounced it down. That's actually the uh, very like almost the same as the Italian track I was telling you about. Oh, I wish I could remember the name of it now, but I'm blanking on it. So yeah, thanks for them for giving me the idea. I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the vocal, nice and simple. And lastly, let's talk about the music again, in keeping with this track. Very, very simple. So the main riff is, you'll know this sound, obviously. And it's just really following what the bass line does. Um, you know, da, 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 da. In fact, later on, I do play both together, right? It's, it's, you know, that sound. You know, you all know that. So all I'm doing there is, again, from one of my own sample packs. Um, I've done the hard work to make it sound good. Why, why, why mess around? Um, just, you know, triggering it in contact. A um, little bit of release on it, because I don't want it to be, like, you know, if you, if you had the release down, it starts getting a bit... I uh, didn't really want that, that vibe. I want it to release quite slow, no matter how short I make the notes. And on the channel, probably just, yeah, rolling off a little bit of bottom, 
Uh, there's a filter on it because I'll show you in the intro what we do. Uh, reverb, same as before, delay. Um, yeah, not much feedback, quite dry, but you know, enough that you can hear it. It's mainly the reverb that's doing the work there, right? And then in the intro, it's just a simplified version of the riff, um, just holding the note. And it's just filtering up using the VPS filter again. Again, not too much resonance, but enough that you can just about hear it. And just automating that coming up. So it's almost the same rhythm, and uh, just holding on that first note until that very last bar. Um, and then later on, on the main build up just before the drop, we've got this sound high passing in. So as you've got one fill, you've got the you know the vamp one filtering up, T nine nine one filtering down. Get an interesting effect of them both coming in, but in different ways. And again on that, I think it's just a bit of reverb, a bit of delay. I've also got the sound shifter on there. We will make that at some point. Yeah, so on the second build, as it's doing the final build, I'm also smearing the pitch up. And that, again, that's kind of it for the music. Every now and again, I just do a cool little drop in, like a little hip hop stop on the beat, and just just play either the vamp sound or the T ninety nine one, just to give uh, that little stop a bit of impact. And the last little thing is just some little swooshy effects to make the builds a bit more interesting. So as the um, as we're building up to the drop, got this. So this is the thing I bounce down. Vanguard is a really old, um, like analog, subtractive synth, and but it does really cool. Um, it's got a really cool tone for these kind of risers. So I'll have made that in Vanguard and then bounced it down at some point. Um, and then just a sort of noisy thing. So the the Vanguard thing is this, like a pitch riser. So obviously in pitch with the track. And the reason I probably bounce it down is so I can do this nice volume slide on it easier. And then on top of that, just a typical kind of white noise, swooshy riser. And we play those together. And it just gives the, the build a bit more excitement. Like if we play the build without it. fine but then with it just has that extra layer of sort of excitement on the build before the drop um, and yeah that's it every now and again um, I do it without the riser when I need to just in the intro and the outro um, but yeah every time before there's a main drop do that effect and that is just about it. Fairly simple track. I hope it sounds, uh, I like it, but I hope you think it sounds quite cool. Um, it's kind of breaksy without being too overtly kind of, you know, electro breaks. Um, slightly less festival, I guess, than I would normally do. Um, just more of a groover. You know, it's quite simple musically, quite simple with the bass line. The drums just roll along, apart from the couple of little edits here and there. Um, and that's it. So yeah, if you want to go and check it out, it's on the uh, the compilation from Top Door Digital. All the descriptions are in the link. So all the links are in the description even. Um, so if you want to check it out, click on those and have a look. And until next time, I'll see you later.